Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a special preview of Kerbal Space Program 1.2. So, we have a space probe sitting on the landing pad, and using the magic of the newly redesigned cheat menu, we now have hyper-edit-like functionality, so we can set an orbit around the moon with a click of a button. The debug menu has had quite a few changes. There's quite a new, few new features in there, there's new stuff in the settings menu. But uh, the main thrust of this release, or rather the main feature most people will experience, is in the top left here. The signal strength is 48%. What we have now is a version of something approximating remote tech. It's not as complicated as remote tech, and it's certainly not as punishing. So I have a spacecraft here, the antenna, every spacecraft has an antenna built in. And uh, this is based on showing me that I have a connection back to Kerbin because I can see it. But I can deploy my antenna. And as soon as this comes out, you see my signal goes green and I have 100% signal strength. Now in career mode, this is actually going to be quite a big change to the game mechanics. Well, to start with, you're going to be unlocking antennas, but also uh, upgrading your spaceport will upgrade the range of the antennas on the ground. So, and like remote tech, this thing takes into account line of sight. So if you go below the horizon on the moon, you lose all contact. Now, because there's always going to be far sides of planets, you can set up relay networks using the relay antennas. These are new classes of antenna which are built into the game. These not only can transmit to Kerbin, but they can forward the signal onto your spacecraft to make sure that everybody can see each other. The relay antenna are bigger, heavier, more expensive, but that's the price you pay if you want to build out your communications network. Again, we can place this into an appropriate orbit to uh, supply relay capabilities. I'm going to try and put it near one of the Lagrange points, about 60 degrees behind the moon. Of course, this requires a lot of guesswork. We drop it into that orbit, it's in the wrong place. But that's fine, we just poke around with some numbers and that looks close enough to me. And so switching back to our main spacecraft, as it moves around the moon and into the signal shadow, it automatically switches over to the trailing satellite, providing the relay to keep everything working. The good news is the new Sparter probes come with something called Curbnet. Now, Curbnet is a little like the ScanSat mod. It essentially lets you take a look at the terrain below you. So you can scan a surface for various things. You can adjust the field of view in this case. You can move the uh, site around and find out where the biomes are. No longer will you be guessing. And also, the bug where you would have intermediate biomes on the borders between two different regions is has been fixed. So you're no longer going to find polar regions right uh, close to the edge of the space center. The capabilities of Curbnet are dependent upon the probe core that you use, and some probes are better than others at detecting things such as anomalies. Now we're flying over this crater near the uh, equator of the moon, and bingo, there's a little question mark there. Previously you had to kind of know these magic coordinates, and uh, or stumble across them, or use a mod perhaps, but now there is a, a method in the game to let you find these rare and interesting points of interest. Having located an interesting place to land, you can set a waypoint and target it, so that will behave like the regular navigational waypoints for other contracts. And so we can attempt to put this spacecraft down near the target. Now the first step in any landing is to put my periaps as low as possible over the target. Now I have a maneuver node set up, but because I'm out of communications reach, I can only use 100% or 0% thrust, and I can only use the navigation buttons. So the WASD controls do not work when you're out of signal range. You do not have fine control over your throttle. So these are the kind of restrictions you have to live with. There are things you can still do, like setting thrust limiters and stuff like that, but a lot of features such as enabling and disabling maneuver nodes are lost when you're out of communications range. There are many more levels of control. You have like no control if there's no probes on your body, then you can have a level where there is a probe which cannot get a signal. There's a version where you have Kerbals that are on your spacecraft, but they are unable to get, uh, they do not have a pilot and they don't have a connection, all the way up to full piloted Kerbal control. So there are again, much more opportunity for planning interesting missions. 
Now beyond this new feature there are a lot of back-end changes which are perhaps worth mentioning. The font rendering has been completely redone, there's a new version of Unity. Wheel physics has had yet another pass. As mentioned, the debug window has been completely redesigned and now actually includes a text console where you can uh, control things and iterate on things if you like. The stability assist system has been completely rewritten and should be much more fuel efficient, much more accurate and less likely to have your big wobbly spacecraft wobbling all over the place burning all your fuel. Many parts now have new tweakable options. The parachutes, for example, can be set to open when safe. Which honestly I think should be the default setting for it, but in case you're looking for it, it is hidden in a right click menu on the part. Probe cores now have the ability to collect experiments and return them to the planet so you don't have to return the entire experiment. And similarly there's now an experiment storage unit which is kind of a dumb version of the same thing. Combining this with the safe parachute capabilities allows us to simulate something like the experiment return capsules that uh, Osiris Rex or Stardust use. Good luck, of course, trying to catch them in mid-air before they touch the ground using a helicopter or aircraft. That is truly going to be a challenge for the best players. Another fun feature in the new debug menu is the hack gravity option now has a slider. So you can, of course, emulate 1% gravity if you like, or you can grab the slider and increase gravity. You can mess around with this and watch your rocket decide whether they're not able to get into space or not. All fun for everyone involved until you send the slider too far over and things crash. The fuel flow system has been completely redesigned, so for those of you who have ever experienced this, where your spacecraft just wants to go backwards because all the fuel has burned down to the bottom, now you can change the rules about how fuel flows through your rocket. The default settings are probably fine for most people, but if you go into settings and enable advanced uh, tweakables, then you can get access to the fuel priority and adjust this. Obviously I had set that up to behave like the old flow system, but now I've set everything to the same priority and everything within the same stage should flow at a, well, at a uniform rate throughout it. So here we've got fuel flowing from all parts of the tank. You can equally set it so that you split your tank into two parts. The fuel and the oxidizer flow matches a realistic rocket. It's uh, just another option. It'll also help if you are one of these people that likes to build vertical takeoff aircraft. You'll be able to control the fuel burn pattern without having to have a bunch of fuel pipes all over the place. Just to demonstrate now that we have the fuel flowing equally, it doesn't mean that it's easy mode, you can definitely still get some big lateral motions here. This is not quite 100% stable, but at the same time it doesn't actually go entirely in reverse. So obviously if I was aiming for true stability, I would have the fuel burn from the back to the front. But anyway, that is Kerbal Space Program 1.2. It is going to be going into public testing very, very soon. I hope you guys are going to find all the bugs and make sure they get all fixed. And it will be released sometime in the future. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>